Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Keymaker. I'm here with Spring of Dawn. We're going to jump into town real quick, and, uh, oh yeah, off camera, I want to disclaim this first. I claimed the remnants of a Dwarven, of Dwarven fortifications, and I also managed, uh, I think one kingdom event? Bas I think Tristian's ended, and I put him on another, another event. Nothing, nothing crazy. Nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah, should we turn this into dragon and turn the other quest to Sh Shania? And then we'll probably go to the goblin village after that. Since we got that before we got the other place, the deal with goblins. Or the shrine of Lamash too, whatever it was. Let's talk to dragon real quick. Uh, greetings, glad to see you in my shop again. How can I serve you? Alright, I recovered your grandfather's armor. You can take it. Dragon smiles happily, but freezes as he sees the armor. Oh darn. Kurgan, you scoundrel. Ruining perfectly good armor. I gather he couldn't find a buyer for the whole thing, so he's just like, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, that'll be a lot of repairs. It'll take forever. Okay. Await news from Dragon. Okay. So now we're just waiting for him. I meant to quick save before I talk to him as well. You should always quick save before you talk to somebody. I'm pleased to see you again, oh worthy one. What brings you to me? Alright, I don't know which one of these I should do. I'm gonna try to tell him the truth. Hassif tore the letter into shreds, but did recommend I should lie. Uh, but I don't wanna lie. Let's see what this does. Uh, sorry. Uh, Shania appears at you as surprised, but melodious words come off her lips effortlessly. He wasn't pleased? How sad. This reminds me of a story that took place a long, long time ago. Please let me enlighten you, a worthy one. Now, there once lived a mighty warrior by the name of Korkor. His mother was a white shark, and his father was the most lustful and most inventive of all mortals. Korkor inherited his fearlessness from his father, and from his mother his strength and thirst for blood. His skin was as white as milk, and his sharp crooked teeth grew in three rows. There wasn't a warrior in the world who was stronger and more warlike, and he served the Mahar Maharaja lo loyally. But one day, Korkor defeated the poisonous dragon, Sruvara, who turned rice fields into nauseating marshes. But Korkor did not notice when that Sruvara had scraped his white skin on its talon. Infection entered the hero's body, and he grew weak. He lied down to rest and remained there for a thousand years. Nothing could awaken him, even all the strife brought on by the light with Kothagaz, the Dance of Disharmony. Uh, once he finally awoke from his slumber, Korkor discovered that his homeland had been ravaged by this terrible attack, he slept through the, and he'd slept through the battle. Disgraced, he moaned and set off for a faraway gorge, where he would deliver his body to the scorpions, that, that they might eat his flesh and hide him from his shame. For three months, the scorpions ate his white skin and ruby flesh, but still the warrior endured. Even when he was eaten, Korkor did not die, for he was truly great. It was then that the Bunda, that Bunda the singing butcher, came to him. The immortal Rakshasa told him that great was Korkor's shame, but more shameful still would be to run from it like a coward, rather than atone for it. Korkor's spirits were rekindled. He arose and through sheer force of will, forged himself a new body out of iron. He accomplished many great deeds thereafter, and in the end he regained his position of honor and nobility. As you can see, both honor and disgrace may live, within, live in the same body, even though it may belong to a person of worth. Uh, why then cannot my family's deeds be both honorable and disgraceful at the same time? Yes, my kinsmen have spilled much blood, trying to destroy Hassip's family. It was also they who first decided to seek out peace. I am grateful that I have been able to fulfill my duty no matter the price. Go now, O oh worthy one, for my heart has gained peace and my mind attained clarity, which is so important to a true master. Okay, um... Ensure that nothing distracts Shania. How do I... what? Okay. Well, well, we'll see. Okay, to the Goblin Village now. Not gonna lie, I'm not a huge fan of reading her her dialogue. It's uh, 
quite a few words. Oh, kingdom thing. Take care of that as we as we can. Two projects. Research into the nature of the scythe tree. Davic Nettle. Yeah, that was the undead guy. Why did those just pop up suddenly? I thought. Maybe it was a bug and like. Because I just got downloaded a patch for the game. Maybe it was a bug that they didn't pop up when they should have. I thought I remembered seeing the, uh, the first one there. Oh well. To the Goblin Village! I need to catch my breath. We will rest... now. Find the goblin leader. Okay. Let's quick save. Place is pretty big. Let's go. Let's go with us, beastie. You like it there. Friends in the village, food too. Hey, why he be roaring? Hey, beastie, we know. No. Okay. Finish them quick. Repent. All right. Well, that was easy. Another primal hydra over there. Forwards. Of course, it's raining now, so explorations will be a real pain in the patootie. Very quick save. Without and keep uh, keep on marching in. See how many goblins don't care that I'm just walking into their village. Okay. Well. Hey, hey, you potion gulper! Like questies? Going on missions? I have one for you. Okay. Ready missions for this freak? I'd rather chop him into pieces and gobble him up. Haha, <laughs> no, that was loud. Uh, Red smirks menacingly as he reaches for his weapon. Uh, put away your weapon. Why do I even. Why do you even need it? Your puns alone would kill them. With a guffaw, the half orc takes his hand off his weapon. He keeps watching the goblin men menacingly. Uh, what did you call me? Potion gulper. Like sword singer? Like bow shooter? One of those who go run around woods, go deep in caves, on missions and questies like that. Uh, what is this task? Short tail, make shorter. See beastie in cage? My friend and I look after him. We divide work. Open gate, friend goes in, feeds the beastie. Got it? Goblin glances around, slightly irritated. But he be lazy, go away. What I offer is open gate, you go inside, give beastie food. We're running errands for goblins now? Please tell me you're not serious. Uh, won't this animal attack me? No, no, no. Nothing like that. He'd be just a pet. Like slug or spider. Small spider. Or grot snake. He pauses. Little grot snake. Alright, um...
Missions require I be paid first. You be such greedy fingers. What can give you? The goblin glances around. Nothing, nothing, nothing. But his eyes gleam. Uh, you have an experience. You not unforget. Fine, open the gates. Well, you real hero. I seize it. Go in, play with him. I bring food right away. I wanted to get to this barrel, so this this works. Who will Does it matter? We get experience for killing it anyway. Oh, is it really on the other side? Oh no, you have to circle all the way out and around. Okay. That's fine. Really wish it's been raining a lot in the game. Like every time I record. Or Ak, hee hee. No, believe it. The beastie attacked. No, who would have thought? Hey, you're not angry, yes? Let me show you how angry I am. Oh, he hit me for eight? Screw you, goblin. I'm not afraid. Oh goodness. Okay. Uh, you fall back, Valerie. You get it. Okay. Taking care of our fair share of uh, hydras, that's for sure. Well, let's head over this way because I want to loop around and grab that barrel just so I don't forget it. I mean, the map won't let me forget anyway. Hey, why you be pushing me? Okay, and a mana core. Sorry, the dog's tanking. That's okay, too. Alright, well, this isn't too bad so far. Uh, so I go grab that barrel for me. Keep prioritizing Octavia. Yeah, to lockpick it, okay. That's what I assumed, since I kept sending her over there. Another beast pen. Oop. Another Hydra. Let's see if we can, uh... Stand with me. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, get back, harem. Oh, I guess you're attacking now. Harem, don't die. This guy is truly tanky. There we go. Um, let's try some scrolls he can heal himself with. Where are they at? I was using them on the wrong, wrong person. Was I? I may have been. There we go. Hey, you jumbo, come here. I'll punch you hard. Cuck, cuck, you stupid Hulk. Okay, I might be insulted. What can I do for you? What's that thing? I won't let you down. 
Done and done. Okay, so he's trying to lure me into a trap. Alright, I'm gonna start killing goblins. Like left and right. Screw these guys. Ooh. As you approach, the goblin stands, grinning with wide yellow teeth, almost as sharp as his eyes are. You notice a large, dirty sack behind him, which you almost mistook for a second goblin. Ah, an adventurer. Greet and welcomes. I twerk a buyer. I sell, I trade. Whatever you, sword singers need, swingers need. I offer. Want to buy something? I can see it in your eyes. Yes, yes you do. Just five money pieces. Not got that much? Ten then. No? Twist my wrist, I give discount. Just half. Half hundred. So have have a deal? Deal deal? He looks at his palm trying to shake your hand. Um what are you selling? Everything you be needing for adventures. Spellcasting, sword swinging. Just look at yourself. Who can you beat with metals and craftings like that? Only today, only for you, the bestest weapons made by Goblin's bestest crafters. Just wait. The Goblin reaches into the sack by his side and produces a stick with a rusty nail at the end. He swings it several times with a swish, almost hitting his own ear. This one can bring down whole tr this this one can bring whole troll down. Take it, it not be many coins. Don't like it? Fine, I can sell you a hydra if you like. It be a good hydra, all teeth and claws, just a giant house of money pieces, and it yours. He puts on a grim expression as if afraid of being cheated. Delivery cost you though. Uh, how's the merchant trade? Not good. One can't trade with them. They know money. Not a single sliv's shiny or copper circle. Only teeth rocks. The goblin suddenly brightens. Hey, what about you? You have money. Just as suddenly he's in, suddenly he narrows his eyes. But maybe you try fool me. See wares, take wares, run. If so, I'd be seeing money first. Show me your wares. Fearsome mace of twerk. A brilliant example of famed goblin weapon smithing. Alright, well, not messing with you anymore. This guy's still over here insulting me. I'm sure there's another I trap, yeah. Something. I did as you asked. I did as you asked. All right, well, let's, uh, let's corner him. Uh, goblin horse, oh, ouch, he, he can't believe it. He passed all the traps. The goblin taps his fingers together as if it helps him think. Beads of sweat are forming on his brow. What do I do now, do now, do, ah, I do know, I do. The goblin raises his hands as if welcoming you. Congratulations, Shanks, you passed my first test. And for that, he begins drumming his fingers again and a bead of sweat builds. One becoming so large it begins to curl his ear down. For that you get a gift. Wait here, wait here, I bring it right away. I'll be back before you know it. The goblin begins backing away, wiping his shaky hands over his rags. Uh, you'll be dead before you know it. Ack, why, don't, ah, murder, murder. Yeah, screw you, dude. This goblin's hit a lot harder than I would expect. You know, goblins to hit. Hey, a falcon. Beast render. Uh, this blade smells of blood, but for some reason the smell only evokes hunger. Plus two animal bane falcon. Which as a child, I would pronounce as falchion. By that, I mean up until like some time in. I think I finally corrected the way I said it in high school. Throughout middle school, I said Falchion. Alright, I think following the road here will probably lead us to our main objective, so let's stick around the outskirts of the village first. And then we'll, we'll try to progress the story. Yeah, because they're running towards the center of the village over there. 
So I feel like this is the way for me to go. A primal manticore. Alright, well, there wasn't much over here anyway. Or was there? 500 gold. Don't hesitate. To victory! Strike as one. <laughs> These guys have a pretty decent crit rate, it seems. Because in both the fights we've been in, they managed to get at least one crit attack off. Or a critical hit off. Alright, well, no secrets. Okay, well, let's head towards the center of the village, I suppose. Oh, yeah, I don't think I mentioned a few episodes ago I installed the uh, that bloody mess uh, DLC that they released. Now it's the beginning of the hunt. You're gonna fight me? Okay. Do not hold back. Okay, having some sort of fire resistance probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Hell of Rings, probably of protection. Yeah, it's just stuff I can sell. Alright, in we go. An owlbear? I hate owlbears. That's how Valor selected. My bad. Not who I wanted him to attack. Speak with the captured goblin. Okay. The goblin tied to the pole has seen better days. He's covered in filth and a wide variety of burns, bruises, claw marks, even a bite mark or two. Yet he's smiling widely as if in triumph. Ha! The chat shanks not believe knock knock. Poked him with words and spears and torches. Bite him, kick him. Who be survivor now, huh? Knock knock me. Always me. Hail a mash to. Greet and meet heroes. See how I deal with them? They were like, we be smashing you. And I snarl back, no, I be smashing you. And the beast was, rrrg, and bite. And bite again. Haha, <laughs> that's it. Uh, who are you? I be the ear of Lamashtu. The goblin grins widely, then falters. No, not that. I be the seer of Lamashtu. That's who I be. Her favorite of many. I bring her message. She protects me. Sends me offerings to eat and whatnot. I be important. Very important person. What makes you think you're the seer of Lamashtu? I had dream. The goblin leans in as far as he can, nodding, the cords creaking as he does so. Lama, hold knock knock in her big white arms, rock me, let me suckle her skulls, pet my head and sing. Who's smartest, who bravest, who favorite? Knock knock, that's who. And the next day, proof, I found nests, untouched with eggs. He moves to rub his belly, but the cords stop him. It be a sign, and bigger sign. Lama just saved me, right before your eyes. Now why do they want to kill you? Uh, it be because of that half-head shaman, bees bite his back. He be crazy, something get in his way, he be snarling and poking people with fork. He huffs, then grumbles and shivers, as if trying to dodge invisible pokes and prodding in his memories. 
Uh, let's see. What do you know about the incursion of enchanted beasts? Beasts? The goblins. Goblin frowns and shakes his head. Lama Lamashtu be their mother, like all beasts, but she not birthed them out this way, no way. Half-head shaman lie to make people fear him. Shashank stride around, all puffed up. Everyone bows. Even King won't bark a word against him. He says God has sent us these beasties to answer his prayers. He even made us uproot village. He says there is thing of goddess nearby, where beasts come from, called womb. And he calls me blasphemer. Uh, what should I do with your kin? The goblin casts an angry glance towards the other goblins huddling behind the statue of Lamashtu, and hisses in disgust. They deserve a knock across their heads, all of them. Yet, hmm, better not knock. The goblin becomes strangely thoughtful, perhaps reverent. Oblivious, the goblin nods at the statue the goblins are hiding behind. You see Big Mother Idol? Shashanks hide in, their, in her shadow so can beg and whine for Lama to poison, stab, bite, kill whoever hurts goblins. Don't make Lamashtu mother mad. Let them live. Right, thanks for the information. Hey, hey, where are you going? Wait till I untie myself. I go with you. We heroes, we march together. Narnok nods fervently, as if hoping you'll do the same. The shaman fled. I bet you're hide he come back for revenge. He hates you, Longshanks. Hates your guts. Mine too. Narnok stretches against his bonds. Let's follow him, then kick him hard in his guts. Teach him a lesson. We kick the king in his guts too while we be there. Uh, you want to go with me? See for yourself. Heroes need muscle, right? Also need brain for plans. Someone with pretty face to charm everyone. And needs leader. Heart of the group. He nods, finishing his case. I can do all of that. So he is the last companion uh, that you can get to join your party. I think he was a Kickstarter goal. If I'm not mistaken. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're going to let him join the party. Why not? Join us. Aha! Onwards for the adventures. You won't actually be joining us. You're going to go back to the uh, capital. I did as you asked. Um, I'm probably going to kill all of you. We'll deal with that in a second. The huddle behind the statue of the Mashtu, a batch of goblins cast angry glances at you, muttering threats and curses. One of them, apparently the bravest, steps out, shaking his fist, and howls at you in a quavering voice. You, no, no, not dare c -c come closer. We catch one of your kind before, and the Mashtu c -c cursed him a terrible curse. She do the same to you. He points his finger at the corpse of a goblin you killed. See how goddess punishes the blasph bla blasphemes? You run now or she get you too. They now want mercy. When prisoners begged them, they listened? Master or not, you will, not be, respon you will be responsible for anyone these vermins kill or maim. Do not press your luck. Cleanse your lands of these monsters. Uh, these pests are funny. Let let's fry them. Yeah, I'm going to attack. And Eom an Eomede... Iomede's name ought to destroy these foul beasts. I would have said it differently, but our thoughts are essentially the same. The Cossack's mouth touches Valerie's lips. Great. Pray to your goddess, you little rats. She can't help you anyway. Haha. -ha. Uh, goddess, let us sacrifice him to you. Alright, first things first. Synergy communal. We're going to do fire. We're also going to haste here. And you need to heal yourself. You're in trouble. Stupid goblins. And they probably don't have any yeah, they don't have anything good. As was expected. Alright, is that the whole village? Sure looks like it. Let me go over here real quick and check along this border here. For any hidden items. Hidden... I stand ready. Hidden stuff. Oh, wow, for 16. That's a good heal. Alright. So check over here real quick and then we'll leave the village. Alright. So to actually... 
All right, we have to do the witch hunt next with Keston. I will not falter. I'm gonna stop somewhere and sell all the stuff that I just picked up from these goblins. Probably the capital since it's on the way. We can rest there as well. I guess I didn't need to use the resist fire, but I assumed that they'd have the AOE fire effect that they had when we fought at the gate. Or we killed him too fast for him to be able to use it. sleepy this morning. So next we have the Shrine of Lamash to which I believe is where Keston wanted us to go. Yeah, okay. Let's head towards the capital first. Oh. Any merchants down here? The secluded lodge, yeah. Let's get a secluded lodge instead. Then I sell stuff to the uh to Dumra or Dumra, whatever her name is. An unavoidable random encounter. It's probably something to do with the uh the story. Coughing. Oh man. Let's see. A group of travelers carrying bags, satchels, and sacks full of all manner of goods and chattels are uh, shuffling their feet on the road in front of you. Two tougher looking men are helping one of their companions stand. A pale youth who is shivering, his face covered in sweat. As you approach, the men turn to you and glare at you. Your Grace? Uh, who are you? The man throws a glance at his small group. Name's Urkid. These here are my companions. We came from the village of Lervik, and we're traveling to Galt in search for protection. Uh, judging by your bags, you're not just traveling. You're on the run. You see a change in Urkid's eyes, and he gives you a cold, even wicked look. If it were so, your grace, it's more risk to stay in the barony than to go into the wilds. Three folks torn to pieces in our village, and even more were slain by the beast that came out. Galt has to be safer, they say. And I say we go see see for ourselves. Die here or in Galt, from disease or by the sword, a bit sooner or a bit later. Our earthly lives are filled with choices, but what change truly comes of them? This young fellow, what's wrong with him? Oh, Virgin, you mean? Must have eaten something. He was fine, see, then felt sick, fever and all, and in the morning he began to cough blood. Arista willing, he'll make it to the border, and we'll find him a healer there. Alright, I'm gonna kill the afflicted... Alright, yeah, I have to go. I feel like I should kill the afflicted youth. Can I still do it? Nope. Alright. It's probably not the way. There it is. Oh, Octavia, no! Alright, um... Did it say now, big guy? Urkid's hands are shaking as he turns to face you. His voice raises to a shout. Cursed Lance, cursed Baron, it's all your fault. Virgin died because of you. We're all going to die because of you. I protect this realm for you. I fight monsters and all I hear in return is cursing and the mewling of cowards. You ungrateful, narrow-minded fools. Brevoy, loyal traitor. I hope you die in a ditch, Baron. I would not be able to protect you if you leave for Galt. Turn back, and inside the capital you'll find protection from the beasts. You will at least save those who can still be saved. The wrath on Arkad's face gives way to disbelief. Is that so? You want to sweep us away from our neighbor's sight. He wipes away tears. 
Tis all the same, no matter where we breathe our last, be it away from home in a foreign land or out in the city streets, let us die in peace. Hear that, lads? We turn back. Alright, well, let's, um, let's get going. And continue. I need to catch my breath. I know you do. Not afraid. Oh, Mastodon. Okay. Cool. 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 Um. Fight it. Well, I was said how I hadn't seen the, or I mentioned how I hadn't seen a mastodon yet. That's pretty exciting. So I wonder if they get that big if you have them as a pet. So so that's ridiculous. But also really neat. But like, he wouldn't fit in caves and stuff, would he? In dungeons. So pretty sure, yeah, you can get a Mastodon as an animal companion in this game. Alright, let's sell this stuff to Derma, or Doomra. Except for those. Everything else is fair game. We also have these. Alright, and let's rest. And everybody out to the Shrine of Lamashtu. 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 Whichever. We'll probably get there, then we'll call it an episode, because I don't want to get delved too far into the next area without, um... Unless it's a very small area, in which case I'd be fine exploring it. But we'll see. Doesn't seem super big. Um, let's see what he has to say first, and then we'll make our decision. Uh, seeing you, Kesta nods. Under his coat, you notice a suit of armor. A sword hangs at his belt. The guard is ready to fight. Happy to see you, my Baron. While we're waiting for you, I've had enough time to choose a good path for the ambush, a good place for the ambush. Uh, I received your letter, Keston, and came as soon as I could. I assume he could figure this out on his own, but I'll let him know. Thank you, Your Grace. I've decided you'd like to see this place with your own eyes. The Master Shrine is on the other side of the hill. I suggest we set ambush right here. The visibility is good, so we can watch the cultists unnoticed and choose the right moment to strike. If you wish, you can examine the location. What do you know about Lamashtu? Kesson frowns. Not much, Your Grace, but I've heard some things. Goblins, kobolds, and other wild beasts worship her. She helps them to breed, protects their young. As for people, the blessing of Lamashtu is too dangerous for them. A woman can give birth to someone so terrible that the villagers might decide to drive a mother and a child out from the out of from the village what? anyway or worse you can go down and take a look at the shrine the scouts who've been watching the cultists told me about a, about hideous rituals that perform there the cultists disfigure and mutilate themselves shriek like demons and copulate in the mud Keston frowns in disgust i just can't imagine who in the right mind except for goblins would ask lamastu for help and agree to be part of this abomination are we ready for ambush the day is right and the time is coming. All we have to do now is wait until the cultists gather to their coven. I hope you're ready for. Hope you're ready to fight. 
I'm ready, Kesson. Let's get those cultists. Come to me, La Master's children. Today we praise our great mother who imbued Adela's cub with life. La Master favors us. She blessed the pack with a new cub, a beautiful female cub, marked by the goddess sacred, goddess's sacred touch. The goddess took cubs, took cub mother's life as a payment. What a worthless female she was. Only eh, okay. I'm not going to read any more of these out loud so I can read everything before. So I can read it in my head faster than I can out loud, and I'm missing like half of it. Let us go! No time like the present. Stand with me. Curses upon you, I'll ask you to avenge your children. Okay. He's taking some serious damage there. Oh, the guard's dead. Did Keston survive? Yeah, alright. That's all that really matters. Some mushrooms. Let's get Octavia over here. There might be something next to the uh, riverbank that she can identify. Ready and willing. Or not. Another melted shard of uh, the ring or whatever. I feel like being close to having that ring finished. Forwards. Oh, see? See, that's why I came over here. Another falcon. Let's give it a gander. Just a frost falcon plus one. Oh, yeah, we'll finish exploring this area, and then we'll call it an episode. After we talk to Keston one more time. It'll probably put us at like 45 minutes or so. Flatstone is covered with the blood and litter with skulls and blood. Flatstone is covered with blood and litter with skulls and bones. All that is left from nauseating rituals. Statue portrays Mother of Monsters, a pregnant woman, uh, a three-eyed jackal head, and feathered wings. The stone is covered with strange images. Alright, that's the exit. Alright, let's talk to Keston. What are you waiting for? He'll escape. Oh, okay. I guess we're supposed to chase him. I will guide us. Oh, we're probably going to get to, like, a book thing. Yep, the triumph over the wicked Lamashu cultists proved incomplete. Some villain, or villainess, had slipped away under the cover of darkness and into a narrow gorge amongst the rocks. At a second thought, our brave Baron, loyal Keston, and their comrades in arms rushed after the fleeing figure. The figure, clad in black, was barely visible in the dark. The villain had gotten far ahead of us. At the last moment, the Baron noticed their prey had turned aside and disappeared behind the rocks. Uh, so our brave heroes rushed into the dark and dreary gorge, chasing the runaway. Well, let's see the reflex check. Uh, the gorge was a din of booted feet, rattling swords, and the curses and snarls of those trying to find their darkness. Still, taking the risk of running into each other or losing their footing on the sharp stones, our heroes chased after the runaway. The absence of daylight and unfamiliarity with the location didn't hinder our brave souls, and they reached the edge of, the, of a stone ridge. Some had already started to cheer, for the lover of dark rituals would soon be in our hands. But there was an unpleasant surprise waiting for us. The cultists, the cultists hadn't fled after all. They're lying in wait right behind the ridge. I had just enough time to spot his raised hand and to hear the incantations of some frightening spell before darkness engulfed us. Finding yourself in utter darkness, when both the sense of direction and the sight of your friends are lost, it does things to one's mind. Especially when the darkness is almost living, breathing, hungry. When it tries to swallow you, to worm its way into your eyes, to blind you forever. At least that's how your true servant felt. Though, to all accounts, she was perhaps the only one among the band who did not surrender to panic, maintaining her steel-eyed composure. 
A desperate moment, and time runs fast. What did our heroes do? Uh, we can do perception. Uh, did, an did another go still and listen. Try to hear where the cultist men have fled. Having decided to plunge through the darkness, Octavia had forgotten one important thing. Besides their companions, there was there was the surroundings to worry about as well. All we heard was the crack of what might have been Octavia's skull hitting rock and a dull thud as their bodies slumped to the ground. Closing their eyes, Octavia caught the sound of a running feet of running feet in the distance becoming fainter and fainter. But even that faint sound was enough. Once we heard where the cultists had fled, we used the sound like a compass to guide us and we were soon out of the darkness easily. But before the villain disappeared, Octavia, Octavia noticed an important detail. The runway was limping on, on their right leg. When the others were free free of the darkness, the cultist was long gone. Where could he have gone amongst these rocks? Okay. As our brave brave heroes reached the edge of the plateau, the vastness of the Camelins opened up before them, an ocean of high grass as far as the eye could see. A beautiful sight, but finding our quarry in this green sea, it would prove impossible. With our heads down and hopes lost, we descended to where a small streamlet flowed amongst the stones, and then, there before us, good fortune. In his haste, our villain had run through the high grass, leaving a trail for all to see. The party immediately set off, driven by a single desire, to capture the criminal who dared escape the punishment of the Baron, and had led us on this unwelcome chase. We moved as swiftly as we could, but even the ground seemed to fight us. Rock gave way to mud, mud which grew deeper as we marched on and seemed to grab at our boots. Even the wind began to rise, lashing at our cloaks, and a foul scent filled the air. Sure signs we were heading towards the gnarl marches. Soaking wet and exhausted, our heroes came upon a cabin at the edge of a swamp. According to Keston, it was a hunter's lodge, owned by Dumra, a hunter who lived there alone and was known for a great for a great temper and little patience. It also looked as if it might be a place where the cultists would seek shelter. Seek shelter. It was unlikely the runaway would brave the depths of the gnarl marshes in the middle of the night. So the Baron pushed open the door and stepped inside, letting a touch of the cool night air in. Whew. Uh, the lodge is lit. The lodge is lit with only a few candles on the tables and the counter. Shadows lie thick around the room. A number of people are here. A well-dressed couple at one of the tables. A girl in simple dress dozes near the opposite wall. And at the counter is an untidy dwarf. She's wiping the mugs and glaring at you. From the half-open kitchen door, you hear the clanging of pans upon metal, presumably a stove. Kesson looks around with a heavy gaze. Things have gone from bad to worse. We must find the cultists before they flee. We have no idea what they look like. The people in the lodge look surprised and concerned. Each seems to recognize you and ask themselves, what is the ruler of these lands doing here at such a late hour, flanked by armed guards? Keston's hand falls to his weapon. Your grace, I'm ready to make an arrest, but if you wish to investigate further before making a decision, I'll make sure no one leaves the lodge until you give the order. Alright, I like to look around and speak with these people. Maybe I'll find something. As you command, your grace, no one will leave this house. I'll make sure of that. Keston looks around the hall once again. My advice, take their room keys. Their personal belongings speak their owner's intent, often more than their masters would like. Alright, and we call the episode here, and the next one will um, get to the bottom of this. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode.